G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia, market down ever so slightly, so we were at 2.7 trillion, now we're just under 2.67 trillion dollars. Uh, down 1.3%, Bitcoin dominance risen ever so slightly, volume down, again it is a weekend, that's uh, not uncommon for that to happen. Bitcoin still sitting around $61,500, just cannot crack uh, that new kind of mark, but it is ranging at the moment. And look, I want to bring something to your attention that has me a little bit concerned. We'll get to that very shortly. But yeah, I am I'm nervous at the moment, and we'll get into that shortly. Look, gas prices, ridiculous. And this isn't uh, indicative of actually where the gas prices are. That's something that's going to be a bit of a sort of main focus today as well. Uh, and I hate to go on about this, but I... You know, other than mention, we haven't really looked at it for a while, and it is something that really frustrates me with a Ethereum uh, and has me concerned for it. Uh, you know, again, we'll get into it shortly. Let's have a look though. How's the actual market doing? We can see. Look, it's a bit of a red day at the moment. Things are down. There are some things that are green though. There's always outliers. Uh, that's just the way it is. You don't have everything going down all at the same time. Well. I don't know, maybe it could. I don't think I've ever seen everything going down at the same time, but yeah, down 1.3%. So you'd expect to see red. But what are the outliers though? What's done well in the last 24 hours? Holy dooly manner, there you go. Pumping Elon uh, Dogelon Mars up 70%. The sandbox, look, the gaming stuff is really sort of taking off at the moment. You know, you can see Engine up another 19%. Chilies, oh, good Lord, 20%. Theta, 15%. Helium, Hedera, so you can see, I mean, there's still some really good gains considering overall the market's down. Very nice, very nice. I mean, Theta Fuel even making a move, so yeah, things are looking good there. Again, I am concerned at the moment. We're going to get into that, you know, very shortly. But let's just have a look. Considering the market's down, what's not doing so well then? Well, there we go. Safe Moon had a pump yesterday, but obviously it's down 20% today. Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Phantom Near. Even Maddox pulled back a little bit. I think this got up to nearly $2.10. I think it was definitely over the $2 mark, and now we've had a retracement. Uh, One Harmony, Crypto, Luna, Adam. There we go couple of losses there nothing major except for safe moon that's 20 percent. that's still up though that's normally always sitting at a two i think they got up to about a six or a seven so it's pulled back to five so yeah just something to consider all right let's move on to the bitcoin chart and this is what has me worried so at the moment the altcoins are doing well excuse me because bitcoin's in a bit of a ranging pattern is this this playing out again are we going to see something like this is Bitcoin having a double top and about to do this all over again now whether it's going to play out in the exact same kind of pattern so again this may be something like this before it does something like this again are we going to see another Wyckoff distribution now again I'm not saying we are and it probably won't play out exactly the same but I am just concerned at the moment. There's a lot of things going on in the market that has me worried. Bitcoin could only just, you know, break into new all-time highs, has fallen under. And again, I never provide you financial advice and I'm not trying to spread FUD and I'm not saying the market's over. I just get the feeling like, again, everyone is expecting November to be crazy and everything to kind of go wild in December, maybe into early January. And then the blow off top happens. A lot of people are expecting that that has me worried that that's why it's not going to happen. Again, not saying it won't, it absolutely could, and you know, a lot of people are expecting it, and a lot of really smart people are expecting it, so maybe that is exactly what happens. But just keep in the back of your mind that maybe it's not, because we really had trouble breaking that all-time high. We only pipped under it, and now it's actually acting as resistance. But that's kind of to be expected as well. We probably should technically have a while under here before we start to move up and make any big moves. I'm just, I just want to put it out there that I'm a little bit worried. Again, I'm not taking massive profits or anything. I'm not panicking at the moment, but I am just concerned that, again, the big players know what everyone is expecting, and so they're going to make sure that they don't let it happen exactly like everyone is expecting. That's how they're going to make the biggest profits, by not letting it play out exactly the same way, because otherwise everyone's going to 
sort of do the same thing and they know other people will start to front run it so if they make it different seem like it's almost going to be the same but then you know get in and out and short the market before everyone else that's where they make the most profits that's how they can buy back in at cheaper prices and things like that so i just want those who are watching my video just to at least have it in the back of your mind I don't want to fud the situation. I don't want to scare you, but I want to make sure that you don't get absolutely wrecked in this market. We are at all-time highs. Two point, you know, sort of six, nearly two point seven trillion dollars. That's all-time highs. You need to remember that. And everyone again is expecting this market to go crazy in November and December. Just be careful that that's the reason it doesn't happen. This is financial markets. You know, people who want to make it big and all the rest of it don't want it to play out the way everyone thinks it's going to play out because then they won't be able to make the most amount of money and they make the most amount of money by unfortunately wrecking other people. That's that's just how markets work. Like it, you know, don't like it. That is simply how it works. That is the market psychology. You make money from other people losing money. That's how it works. And whether that's by, it doesn't mean everyone loses money, but that's by people buying you know, what you're selling. And you've probably bought it at a very cheap price and now you're selling at a high price, hoping that the market's gonna go down at some stage and you can buy back in cheaper. And unfortunately, the people that bought in higher get wrecked. So I'm just keeping an eye on this. I'm not saying this can't break out. And again, this is the weekend. So maybe come sort of Monday, you know, next week, this could go higher. And that is what I'm expecting I'm just, you know, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm just letting everyone be wary. And here's some of the reasons I am worried. We know meme coins have been going absolutely mental lately. Elon Musk named meme coin, we just looked at this before, Doge, Doge on Mars, has gained nearly 4,000% in this month alone. Now, could this be, you know, old time players who are recognizing the trends and getting in on meme coins early to uh, let them pump? Yes, absolutely could be. But also, it's because the market feels like it's at a bit of a top and getting a bit frothy. Again, I go back to this. I mean, look, Doge and Shino, uh, Shiba Inu are down. But I mean, look at that 62%, you know, in the, just 24 hours. You know, meme coins have been doing quite well for a while now. Just be careful. I get the feeling, and some of these gains are feeling pretty frothy. And again, that doesn't, I don't want to FUD people. This could be because we're now in that kind of breakout moment. Everything's starting to get to new highs because people are going, this is again, I've spoke about this before, what we could call a breakout trade. When something is about to break out into new all-time highs, it can be, not is, it can be a good time to get into to things because it means they're about to break out and probably soar a lot higher. But there is such thing as a double top, so it's a fake out. They get everyone up to the highs, get everyone excited, and then they dump it. So just beware. Keep in mind, have your backup plan. If this is a double top and it's not going to work, what are you going to do? Are you ready to, you know, do you have cash on the side to buy the dip or are you ready to take profits if you really have to? I don't think this is the start of you know a bear market like we've seen previously, but this could be the start of something like this again. I don't think it'll go back back excuse me. I don't think it'll go back down to these prices, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have something to bring us all the way sort of down to maybe here again to scare everybody out. Because I still think it's going higher. But again, the big players and the big money, they need to, you know, unfortunately wreck people to make a lot of money and they want to buy back in at cheaper prices for then when it again starts to pump. You know, I, I'm just not sold anymore that the cycles are going to play out like they used to because everyone knows that that's what's coming. And that's the big money's here now. They simply aren't going to... It's not that they won't allow it, but they're going to do everything they can to try and not make it play out like that because they don't want everyone making money because that means the gains are less because everyone's doing the same thing. They want to make the most amount of money, so they have to, as I said, wreck everybody, not wreck everybody else, but they need to get in early and you know play their market game. So consideration, keep it in mind. I mean, look, Squid Game is up 110,000% in the last five days. Now, again, yes, it could be big players getting in and it doesn't mean the market is going to crash, but please just be very, very careful. Things are frothy at the moment. And again, let's say this is about to play out and we're going to have this blow off top. 
it feels like it could be coming fairly soon and it doesn't mean that the blow off top is Bitcoin going to 100,000. It could be Bitcoin going to maybe just into the 70,000s and that's it. And again, everyone thinks, oh, this is just a pullback and so they don't take profits and then that is it. We are in a bear market. Just be wary. That's all I'm saying. And it's because of these kind of things that I've seen that I am worried. But moving on from the doom and gloom. All right, top drops. Uh, Major League Baseball World Series NFT collection. So everyone's getting in on this NFT thing in the moment. Again, this is what makes me think that a, a market correction could be coming. Because things are so frothy and everyone's getting into it and everyone's kind of making money. The big players, again, to make their money, unfortunately, they've got to crush other people. That's just the way it works. So I am worried. But, I mean, this is good, especially if you're into Major League Baseball. So the championship game attendees can get NFTs specific to each game. So it says down here, they're going to be powered by the Avalanche blockchain. So, again, this is something different. It's not Ethereum. It's uh, not, uh, not Solana. It's not... Um, Polygon, Avalanche. So all these you know, chains that have only really sort of come about in the last sort of year or so seem to be doing pretty well. So according to Tops, the 2021 World Series NFT collection packs, they're going to be $25 per pack, which includes one NFT digital uh, collector's pack. Now only a thousand packs are available per day and every pack has equal chance of winning rarities uh, as all the singles are scarce. Now it also says down here, in addition to the World Series NFT collection drop, fans who attend the World Series in person this year will have an opportunity to, res to redeem exclusive tops uh, and now NFTs specific to that game. So again, this whole NFT space is really starting to blow up. And again, we can go back to, you know, Chili's as part of that, Engine's part of that, you know, S Sand and Manor. I mean, they will have things to do with NFTs. They're more uh, sort of gaming, but Theta is also NFTs. That is why you're starting to see some of these moves. Uh, you know, things again could explode and just go mental from here. But also, again, I just want people to be aware. I hate to kind of spread FUD and things like that. But you know, I want to make sure that, you know, anyone who's watching my channel doesn't get too carried away and think that, you know, it's just always to the moon and everybody makes money. Unfortunately, the smart money makes money and everybody else generally gets a little bit crushed. You know, hold long enough and you probably, you know, will make money. But unfortunately, you probably get a little bit wrecked first. That's, you know, it's part of learning uh, how to invest and when to take profits and how to take profits. That really is probably one of the hardest things to do. Uh, and look, even I struggle with taking profits sometimes because you just, you get caught up in the hype and you think it's going a whole lot higher. But again, if you're an investor and holding for the long term, done your research, you're probably going to be fine uh, over the longer term. But there's no guarantees. Investing is risky, period, even in the stock market. Don't let people confuse you and pretend like, oh, no, the stock market's uh, safe. It is not. It is super dangerous and big companies fold and all sorts of things happen all the time. You know, Facebook has been on a downwards trend for a long time. Now they've trend, uh, turned to meta and they're, you know, going for the metaverse space. There's no guarantee that plays out. You know, they got, uh, what is it, uh, Instagram and things like that. But even Instagram's nowhere near TikTok and Facebook doesn't own TikTok and, you know, things can change. Just keep that in mind. All right, moving on. This is... Uh, pretty shitty actually so identity thieves have exploited el salvador's shivo bitcoin wallet setup process so hundreds of el salvadorians say hackers have opened shivo wallets with their id numbers to claim the 30 dollars bitcoin incentive dangled uh, by Nayib bukele's government uh, i wasn't dangled i think it was a really good idea because anyone who opened the wallet uh you know early on and haven't sold their bitcoin they got twice as much but unfortunately, hackers have been going out and using their ID number to make wallets. As you can see, other people have gone to do it and it's basically telling them, no, you already have a wallet when they don't. So there's a hundred. So they said they received 755 notifications. Now, look, a couple of these uh, 755 notifications are people going to be saying that just because they've heard and they do have a wallet and they're going to try and double up. Look, most people are pretty good uh, and aren't going to do that, but some of that will be that. But it is also sad that, you know, people who could probably use that $30 in Bitcoin, which is now worth twice as much, won't be able to get that. So, 
you know, constant sort of scams going on. And, you know, speaking of scams, I mean, this blew me away. Police seized 200, uh, sorry, 2,900,000 in Bitcoin and other crypto assets from a schoolboy in money laundering probe. A schoolboy, good Lord. So according to the Lincolnshire Police, detectives seized over 48 Bitcoin and other crypto assets from a 17-year-old schoolboy involved in credit card fraud and money laundering. At 17 years old, I mean, you know, it was a different time and place, but at 17 years old, I wouldn't have known where to start with this kind of stuff. Now, what he's done, or she, it doesn't say, oh yeah, schoolboy, sorry, so there we go, it was a boy. The miner set up a fake phishing website to look like a gift voucher site called Love to Shop. So people were getting on there and then he was uh, using the PayPal app and putting the money into PayPal and then converting it into cryptocurrencies. I mean, 48 Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, this young gentleman has done quite well in monetary terms. Uh, you know, I don't like people who do stuff like this. I, th I think it's really wrong. Like eventually that money comes from someone and don't get me wrong, PayPal will, you know, sort of pay everybody back. But PayPal then, you know, they get their money back through insurance, which we all end up paying for and fees on their customers. So one way or the other, we do end up paying. Even if some people say, oh, it's just the big business and insurance will cover it. Yeah, but we pay for those insurance premiums. That is just how it works. Everybody pays for that. So, you know, I'm glad he got caught, but I mean, 17 and he was ingenious enough to do that. I mean, yeah, kids these days, um, you know, they are seriously 10 times smarter when it comes to technology, you know, than my generation ever was. There would be no 17 year olds uh, in my generation doing this kind of stuff. But now, you know, a lot of these kind of hackers and things like that are young kids uh, and specifically teenagers uh, the early 20s. A lot of them, that is the age bracket where they're coming from. Not all of them, but definitely a lot of them. All right, last but not least, this really frustrates me. Ethereum gas fees have risen over 2,300% since June. Now, there is upside to it. So the demand for Ethereum has risen as a result of this week's old tower upgrade. So that's great. People want to use Ethereum. But again, Ethereum now, it's just priced anybody, any normal person out. You cannot use it. The fees are absolutely ridiculous. And we go down here, the average transaction fee, and this is the average on Ethereum, is soaring at $51.45. You try and go to Uniswap or do anything smart contract-wise, you're looking at 200 now, only seven days ago, the average transaction fee on Ethereum was $22.52. So it's basically doubled and some in a matter of seven days. And if we are going into this big, crazy sort of blow off top, that's going to get up into the hundreds. Ethereum 2.0, I hate to harp on this, but it really can't come quick enough. And I am really worried for Ethereum. I think they are going to continue to lose so much ground and they are losing ground. They really are losing ground. Other than big end players, you know, the high end players can use it, but smaller players, they just couldn't touch it. You couldn't, at the moment, it'd cost you a fortune to buy Ethereum from some, you know, exchange and then simply send it to your wallet. You know, if you're only buying, let's say, $10, $25 worth of Ethereum, you couldn't send it off the exchange. You'd have to leave it on the exchange. It'd cost you so much. It is just, it's criminal and, you know, I still have high hopes for Ethereum, but ETH 2.0 cannot come quick enough. Like they're talking, you know, June next year, that is, you know, I fear the true, what's the word I'm looking for? The true, oh, I can't even think of the word of what I'm trying to say now. Yeah, I don't think the average person is going to be get on being be able to really take advantage of Ethereum this bull run, if it truly is about to end, you know, in sort of December, January, uh, then, you know, these other projects will take off. And, you know, yeah, I'm just worried. I don't know how else to say it. It is, you know, been criminally too high for gas for Ethereum for so long. But look, it's not just Ethereum. Bitcoin gas fees have gone up as well. But, you know, they got the Lightning Network and, you know, their, their gas prices aren't quite as bad as Ethereum. But don't get me wrong, they do up. That is, you know... <laughs> Scaling and gas fees, they are the, the 
I would say they're the biggest thing for crypto to really get over before mainstream adoption. Nothing else uh, is even remote. Like security, yes, we're worried about security, but security is generally still pretty good. Now, there are hacks, don't get me wrong. There absolutely is hacks going on. Even a Binance Smart Chain uh, DeFi platform got hacked just the other day. But security isn't the issue. It is more so scaling and gas fees that are just... You know, again, Bitcoin needs to get it sorted. They need more people on the Lightning Network and Ethereum. You know, they need 2.0 to come out because otherwise it is only the L2s that can be used. And, you know, there's still plenty of projects that aren't on L2s just yet. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone still should be on the gain train, but just beware. I think we might have a hefty correction coming sort of soon before we eventually go on to, you know, this blow off top that everyone's expecting. All right, I'll see you next time.